Segment 28, Stellar Temperature, Radius, and Luminosity. Let's start by asking, how do we know the physical parameters of the Sun? Well, mass, how do we know that? We discussed earlier how we can measure the distance from the, uh, from the center of the solar system by various techniques, in including, uh, as our best measure, using radar to measure the distance of Venus and then Kepler's laws to figure out the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And if you know the distance from the Earth to the Sun, you uh, know the velocity of the Earth around the Sun because you know the circumference of the orbit and you know that the period of the orbit is one year. So that gives you the velocity, which turns out to be about 30 kilometers per second. And then you know from Newton's laws that the velocity of an object uh, in, in orbit is equal to the square root of gm over r, or in this case, the gravitational constant times the mass of the sun divided by the distance between the Earth and the sun, little d. It, we can take this equation and rearrange it. We square both sides, and then we move all the terms other than m over onto the other side by multiplying or dividing accordingly. So we, we multiply on both sides by d, and we divide on on, on uh, both sides by g, and we see that the mass of the sun is equal to the distance from the Earth to the sun times v squared divided by g. So v is we get from the length of the year, d is the Earth's sun distance, and g we get from lab exper experiments. So we have a, a, a ready way to get an accurate value for the mass of the sun. What about the luminosity of the sun? How do we know that? Well, we can measure the flux from the sun. Uh, we'd like to do this uh, in near-Earth orbit from space so that we don't have to worry about absorption of the atmosphere. We can measure the total flux from the sun, the energy per square meter per second, so the number of joules per second, so the number of watts per square meter. This is what's known as the solar constant. Um, and then we know that f is L over 4 pi d squared, so again, with a little rearranging, we have that the luminosity is 4 pi d squared times f. So we take that measured flux, we already know the distance d, so we can derive the luminosity of the sun in that way. How do we get the density of the sun? Well, the mean density of the sun is just the mass of the sun divided by the volume of the sun. And so the v in this case is volume, not velocity anymore. And we've measured the mass, and we just divide by 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the, the volume of the sun. And then we have uh, the uh, density, which is about 1,400 kilograms per meter cubed. That's about a, a little bit more dense than water. So you might ask me, where did we get the r from? Well, we got the r from measuring the angular size of the sun and the distance and just using a little trigonometry. I, I think we explained that uh, a little earlier on. So how do we get the temperature at the surface? Um, one way to get the temperature is to use the spectral type and the spectral type temperature relation, which we, we talked about with, with spectral types. But uh, a, a better way for the sun is to use what's called the effective temperature we know from the Stefan Boltzmann law that the luminosity is just 4 pi r squared times sigma t to the fourth. And we can rearrange this equation, and we get this equation here for t, which is in terms of the, the 1 fourth power of the luminosity. And if you plug in the various values, we've got the luminosity, the size of the sun, and the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is a laboratory constant. And when you plug these in, you get uh, 5,820 degrees for the sun. This is what we call the effective temperature. That is, the temperature the sun would have if it were a perfect black body. Because it deviates slightly from this, when you measure the temperature in other ways, you get slightly different values. But this is the temperature of the sun taking its luminosity and its size um, and using the black body relation. So these are facts we've determined for the sun. How many of these can we determine for stars other than the sun? Well, mass is out except in certain special cases, in particular for binary stars, uh, because we don't have something orbiting the star that we can use as a, as a mass probe. Distance, well, we can do this if it's close enough and less well if it's uh, more distant using parallax. So we can, for many stars, we can get a pretty good estimate of the distance. Luminosity, we can do well if we have the distance and we can then use uh, we can then use the flux, as we did before, to get the luminosity. On the other hand, if the star is in a cluster or a galaxy whose distance we get some other way, and we'll talk about that when we talk about, about clusters and about galaxies, 
we can also get a luminosity for the stars. And then, as I mentioned before, we can get a rough approximation of the luminosity by looking at the spectral line shapes. The density depends on our knowledge of mass and radius and can be derived from the other two if we have them. The temperature we usually get from using the relationship between the spectral type and the temperature. We, we have models that tell us if a star has a certain spectral type uh, what its temperature is. So using the relative line strains and line shapes we can get things. But what else can we do? Is there anything else that we can measure? Well, it turns out there's one more thing we can get, which is the mystery fact. And that mystery fact we get from using this effective temperature concept. Recall that the total energy put by a black, out by a black body of a given size is 4 pi r squared sigma t to the fourth. So we've derived L, t we know from the stellar spectrum, so we can get the size of the star uh, by switching this equation around in the other ways. In the case of the sun, we kind of derive the temperature since we knew the size and the luminosity. In this case, we derive the size because we measure the temperature from the spectrum and the luminosity by knowing the distance and the flux.